Look, simple harmonic motion is described by this equation. x is equal to a sine omega t plus phi. x equal to 0 corresponds to the equilibrium position. The maximum value of sine is 1 when x equal to a, that is the maximum displacement of the block from equilibrium. The minimum value of sine is minus 1, so the minimum displacement is minus a. So the block oscillates between plus a and minus a. a is called the amplitude. Omega and phi are also constants. We'll see what omega and phi mean. For now, we know that omega is equal to root k by m for a spring of constant k and a block of mass m. And in the case of the simple pendulum, omega is equal to root g by l. Notice that omega is determined by the properties of the system, independent of what the amplitude is going to be. Right. Now, if you look at this quantity in the brackets, that stuff is called the argument of the sine function. That is what determines which part of the oscillation you are at. Note that the argument of the sine function is a function of time. Omega and phi are constants. As time t changes, the argument changes. So the value of the sine changes. Hence, x will change. So the block is moving. Its position is a function of time. Now, when the argument is pi by 2, the sine is 1. Sine pi by 2 is 1. That's when x is a maximum. It's at the maximum. It's at the maximum when t is such that the argument is pi by 2. When the argument is 3 pi by 2, it's at a minimum, minus a, because sine 3 pi by 2 is minus 1. When the argument is 0, the block is passing through its equilibrium position, maybe moving to the right or maybe moving to the left. That we can determine by differentiating x and looking at the sine of the velocity. We'll do that later. But for now, let's keep looking at this argument. When the argument is, let us say, pi by 4, sine pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. That means x is equal to a by root 2. It is passing through this point, a by root 2. When the argument is pi by 6, sine pi by 6, that is sine 30 degrees is half. It's passing through the midway point between equilibrium and the maximum value. So which part of the oscillation it is at is determined by the argument of the sine function. It's got a name. We call it phase. Some people call it phase angle. We'll just call it phase. Notice the phase of the motion keeps changing. It's a function of time. The phase determines which part of the oscillation you are at. Now this number phi it's a constant. It's called phase constant. Don't confuse the two. One is the phase and the other is the phase constant. What's the phase constant? The phase constant is the value of the entire argument. That is the value of the phase at time t equal to zero. So phi is the phase at t equal to 0. So at t equal to 0, which part of the oscillation are you at? For example, if phi is pi by 2, that means at t equal to 0, the phase is pi by 2, sine pi by 2 is 1, x is equal to a. That means at time t equal to 0, x is at a. Which means we start our clock when it's passing through the maximum. In that case, the oscillation is described by a sine omega t plus pi by 2. On the other hand, if phi is equal to 3 pi by 2, then at time t equal to 0, the argument is 3 pi by 2, sine 3 pi by 2 is minus 1, x is equal to minus a, that means 
we are starting the clock t equal to 0 when it's passing through the minimum. In that case, the description is x equal to a sine omega t plus 3 pi by 2. So this phase constant is calculated from the initial conditions. And there's one more thing I'd like to tell you. When the argument of the sine function changes by 2 pi, the sine function returns to its original value, which means the block has completed one full oscillation. But take a look at this, a sine omega t plus phi, let us increase the time to t plus 2 pi by omega. Let's take this and plug it to that. We get x is equal to a sine omega t plus 2 pi by omega plus phi. Expand that, it becomes a sine omega t plus phi plus 2 pi. So by changing the time by 2 pi by omega, we have changed the argument by 2 pi, which means it's come back to the same original position that it had at time t. So at t plus 2 pi by omega, it comes back to the same value that it had at t. So the time period of oscillation is 2 pi by omega. And of course, the frequency is 1 over time period, so that it is equal to omega by 2 pi. And now we can go take a look at this and say, look, the frequency of the mass and spring is 1 over 2 pi root k by m. For the simple pendulum, it's 1 over 2 pi root g by l. So the moment you give me the spring and the block and say this is the arrangement, the frequency is determined. Whether I pull it aside by 5 centimeters and release it, or pull it aside by 1 millimeter and release it, amazingly enough, the time period and the frequency are the same. This is a property that is peculiar to simple harmonic motion, as opposed to all other kinds of oscillations. Let's now look at an animation to get an idea about phase and phase difference. What you see in front of you are two particles executing simple harmonic motion. Notice that these two particles reach their respective maxima at the same time and their minima at the same time, pass through zero at the same time they are said to be oscillating in phase. In this particular example, they also have the same amplitude. They both move the same distance in either direction about their respective equilibrium positions. When you want to talk about the phase difference between two oscillations, you can only do so if you are talking about two oscillations of the same frequency. In this example, you can also observe that they both have the same frequency. Let us change the amplitude of one of them and see what happens. Here we are. The two particles now are oscillating with different amplitudes. The black one has a larger amplitude than the red one. If you observe for a little while, you'll realize that they both still have the same frequency but the important thing here is, they both reach their respective maxima at the same time and their respective minima at the same time. So once again, they are both oscillating in phase. In other words, there is no phase difference between their oscillations. Even though their amplitudes are different, they both reach their respective maxima and minima at the same time. In the next example, let's introduce a phase difference between the two, keeping the amplitudes different. Here we are. Now take a good look at this oscillation. First thing to realize is they still have the same frequency. 
when the black one reaches its minimum the red one reaches its maximum when the red one reaches its minimum the black one reaches its maximum they are said to be exactly out of phase or the phase difference between them is pi 180 degrees or pi once again the phase difference does not have anything to do with the amplitudes it has to do with their relative state of the oscillation in this case the black one reaches its maximum when the red one reaches its minimum so again they are pi out of phase let's try a different phase difference check out this oscillation for a little while when the black one passes through the zero the red one was its minimum when the red one passes through its zero the black one was its was at its maximum if you keep observing these two you will again realize the frequencies are the same in this example the amplitudes are also same but they are exactly pi by 2 out of phase when the black one is reaching the maximum the red one is passing through zero when the back black one is reaching its minimum the red one is passing through the zero on its way back if you observe this you will see that the black particle is ahead of the red particle see the black one reaches the minimum first then the red one the black one reaches the maximum first then the red one they are out of phase by pi by 2 and we say that the black particle leads the red particle by a phase difference of pi by 